Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Resident Rule Breakers. I'm Kayla. And I'm Camille. Today's podcast is going to be about episode 207 called Trial and Error, written by Chris Bassoonian and Tiana Madhuari Lincoln. Directed by Rob Greenlee, who has also directed episode 314, which was called The Flea, in episodes 403 and 404, Act the Accidental Patient and Moving On in Mother Hands. So he's directed at least three other episodes of The Resident. So before we get into the episode discussion, the premiere date has been set for season five. Yay! Yay! Came way sooner than we predicted. September 21st, which was a prediction of ours. So Yay! And we really don't have anything on plot. They're being so tight-lipped. Amy can't even post anything other than Matt. <laughs> so... Makes you wonder why. Usually they're, like, more open with, like, you know, posting stuff, like, you know, behind the scenes. I just want to know more. I want to know who else is going to be coming yeah. on this season and stuff. Because usually they have, like, at least one guest, one new recurring actor that will yeah. come up. yeah. Episode titles usually come when we get press releases because sometimes they spoil episodes. But press releases are usually about two weeks prior to their episodes airing. Yeah. Fox White Fox runs. The photos come about the same amount of time. Yeah. And so a lot of times spo- the photos can spoil the episode as well. I mean, if you really look into it and you know the show very well, you, you can pretty much predict it just like looking at a photo. Hate yeah. to say that, but it's the truth. There will be a promo. They always have a promo. I predict maybe by the end of August, yeah. we'll have that. Because we will watch, because we have alerts on all these press releases and photos and stuff. And believe me, you'll see it on our social media and in the group. You won't be able to miss them. We're going to be better with doing that this year. And don't complain about spoilers because these things are press material. So it's not a spoiler if it's released by Fox themselves. End of August, early September, that's my prediction, but I was wrong about the pr- the, pr- the release date too. So when we were going to get it. So end of the episode, I, we promoted it with Jesse being in the drug child kind of thing. And I like, I haven't watched this episode in so long because of the other plot line that I really don't like. Uh, <laughs> but the Jesse plot line starts with her d- decline in her health started with this episode. The drug trial was the culprit to her death yeah she has by the end of this episode she has kidney failure or whatever which we later find out you know which we know now is the reason why she needed a kidney transplant it resulted to but it was a cancer drug that they were having in a clinical trial which giving a cancer drug to a a person who doesn't have cancer is just dangerous yeah absolutely i mean i understand that that drugs go through clinical trials. Every single drug we take, it, yeah. vaccine, drug, everything goes through a clinical trial. I understand that. But testing a cancer drug on a non-cancer patient that just sounds like that may a, have been uh, the best idea. Yeah, that sounds dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, and then, you know what's so weird is like that guy who plays the clinical trial doctor I see him everywhere. <laughs> He's on I the most he I think the first time I saw him was on Criminal Vines, mm-hmm. where he like played this guy who would like pour acid on these women's eyes or whatever. And then he was also on Grey's Anatomy where he, and it was just like I see him everywhere. <laughs> He's very memorable in all his characters and stuff. But yeah, I in this episode I kind of saw a little bit of good Bell. Yeah, good Bell's beginning to make his appearance. But they also showed where Bell is like, he thinks about his like they had a reference to his when he did the prostitution. Yeah, that was hilarious. It did a reference that to that in the end of the episode. So but yeah, good bell is beginning. Yeah, good bell is starting to show up a little bit, but I laughed when Kit was suggested to him. 
a high class process. And he just goes, and, hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sitting there going like, he already did that. <laughs> and got and and got arrested for it in process. Yeah. The thing is, like Nick's worried because this is her her baby sister. You know, yeah. she's had to be more of a mother than a sister to her to keep yeah. her out of trouble. She's at as far as I know, she's OD at least twice, and Nick saved her both times. They she was in rehab twice, of course, the course of the ep- over the course of the show, and there she she's needing money so she can pay a deposit on an apartment, and she don't want to live with Nick. And I I get it, you want her own place, but there's other ways to go about doing this besides risking your life. But a friend of hers who was in rehab with her died during this clinical trial. And, but I think the connection to, from, to Nick, Jesse being her sister, maybe I'll go, hold on, wait a minute, family member of one of my employees? No. <laughs> so, and then Conrad just being there the whole time. Like he, one, he told Nick that Jesse was there. Uh, so he's not going to keep a secret from Nick, even if Jesse wanted him to. And he was there for Nick when she was worried her sister was going to die. So, you know, this proves how strong Conrad and Nick really are. And I think at the end of the season, they really forgot that. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I feel like Conrad and Nick are so- I don't know. I, at this point, I do. I was like still wavering with them because I don't think at this point Conrad still hasn't worked on himself yet. No, but he is there for Nick, and he won't lie to Nick. And those are two yeah. good things that this episode proved he was capable of. So yeah. The scene where Bell gives the death notice to John's wife. Uh-huh. And daughter I yep. was like I think this is the part that like I cry almost every episode especially, <laughs> in, this, <laughs> especially in these early season two episodes they're they're emotional yeah that's the scene in this episode that made me cry yeah I didn't cry this episode I was too angry I know well yeah if you actually go back to the website I used to write for and I read the review I wrote for this episode it pretty much says WTF <laughs> I was way check I mean here's the thing okay so like if they had probably cut out Devon kissing Julian there there's a there's a gif of the kiss and going WTF that's pretty much it <laughs> like like literally I like got emotionally shut down after the kiss of that. I'm just like... Devin and Priya, I could tell from this episode that it was not only just before the kiss happened, but I could tell that there was a, their relationship, they weren't going to get married just because they brought up Priya moving to San Francisco in yep. this episode. I, that was the doom right there. It wasn't even the fact, this this because that happened before the kiss. And then when the kiss happened, I was like, yeah, this wedding's not going to happen. No, I we mean, knew. We knew, but here's the thing. I I kind of knew like early on that that was gonna happen because, like, I don't know. I think, it's, I, but this I just, this episode kind of like cemented that. Yeah, I just didn't trust <laughs> Devon yeah. for some reason. Or Devon, yeah. And Julie, like, I think that moment that she came in, I was just like, yeah, that's yeah. But Julian, again, in the OR for no apparent reason. <laughs> but anyway, in the OR, they're, they're doing a hip replacement or they're replacing oh a hip replacement. That story alive is so sad. Uh, with the story, I uh, like, <sighs> um, this, this, they did an episode two, this, but, this one was when, where the hit is like metal and metal and they're like rubbing on each other. Mm-hmm. And so like And it's poisoning him. Yeah, and it, as as you as when rub when metal rubs a metal, metal like 
comes off it or whatever, it breaks up. Or whatever, so it goes on to his bloodstream and he like, it affects him, he makes him go blind, deaf, you know, all kinds His memory. Of, yeah. Ability to walk. Yeah. And like that, I just, I just felt so bad for that guy and for his wife and stuff. And they had kids, right? She mentioned they had children. Yeah. Yep. And they had and a business, like, you know. I Mina was like so badass with that one, with that whole story. Like because she was she she knew who to get, she knew who to ask for help and stuff. She was like, hey, um, she went straight for AJ and Hadra. And the, that that the, the funny part is how she introduced them. Because she was like, Conrad is the best diagnostician in our whole hospital or whatever. And this is just AJ. <laughs> and AJ and he's like, like, I'm a cardiothoracic I'm, surgeon and I'm a smidge above average. Smidge above normal. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. That was, that, was the, that was the funniest thing ever was I him say, I'm a smidge above normal. <laughs> that was the best. Conrad's yeah. the best, and I'm just a smidge above normal. <laughs> yeah, but seriously. But no, the way the way she like over blew Conrad's greatness, and then went, and that's AJ. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect acting, perfect delivery. Perfect, whatever. You just can't help but laugh. And seeing these old episodes makes me go. I I, I see Shawnette in these older episodes, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna miss her. <laughs> the thing about it though is, season four Shawnette is not different. Is not the earlier seasons Shawnette. Mm-hmm. Like as ta- as the show went on, what we loved about Shawnette with the attitude and the sarcasm and the like independence and the kick-ass surgeon that she is, which is what we've all fell in love with her for, got faded away. So honestly, I don't miss her. You know, I I don't- I miss the bad ass. Yes. Yes. What the show has turned her into, if it had, if it kept going like that, then I don't want her on the show. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. She definitely got toned down. But yeah, the if, she, if her character has stayed as she, and I hate to say this, as she was in season two. Yeah. But yeah. she progressed and she changed. A little too and to me, I think worse mm-hmm. than in season two, than season one, season two. Mm-hmm. Like the, progr- the progression get it you love Mina for the attitude you love Mina for her sarcasm you love Mina for her like badassery and stuff like that but they started softening her it what we loved about her from the beginning started getting lost you know and I'm like no 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 no. we need the badassery (laughs) you need the attitude or whatever you know Mm-hmm. You're, trying to be yeah. bitter. you're making her more like Nick. Yeah, and, and there, there's gonna only like Nick is, and I hate to say this because I love Emily Van Camp. I love Nick, but she can be bland. Yeah, she's soft. Sorry, but she is soft, and like Minna was like the perfect opposite of her, and then so like when they start, yeah. It was, I don't know. But yeah. I am a part of the minority where I'm like, you know what? Good on her for leaving. Because honestly, I think that she would be better off. I think that, I hate to say it, but the writers did her, did Minna dirty. Yeah, I I agree with you. But the version in this episode, the version of Mina in this episode, I miss. Yes, this is the, this is the bit that we love. Yes. And, and there, and there's a point at the end of the episode where there's a minotaur scene at, at the bar, yeah. and they're talking, and AJ calls her his queen. Yeah, <laughs> and she's like, "I am nobody's queen." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that 
is is the Mina that I fell in love with. Yeah. Hey, isn't that Bib? Um, what's her name? Bib ate. Malcolm talked about that when he said that it was a reference to her being on Black Panther. And yes, like, he calls her princess. And she says, yes. don't call me princess. And then she's, and he says something about her being his queen. And she's like, I'm not your queen or something yeah. like that. But yeah, it is a reference to her being. And in Black she, Panther. it was actually the first time he did that. It was actually Adler, but she, <laughs> and she was like, she hated it at first or whatever. <laughs> But they're both those things are in this episode, yes. The Bollywood dance is in this episode too, which I love the Bollywood dance. It doesn't even look like Bollywood dance though. That doesn't look like the Bollywood dance that I know of or that I've seen. I'm sorry. I, well, someone told me that it, well, it, it's a different style of dance than what we know the Bollywood. I don't remember the name of it. They mentioned it on Instagram told to me what the name of it was called, but it wasn't actually Bollywood. But yeah, the way they were dancing, <laughs> they looked like Bollywood to me. It was so, it was hilarious though, because they were like fist pumping. <laughs> it looked like fist pumping and I don't know, hula dancing. <laughs> That's why yeah. they look like Bollywood to me. Because when you think of Bollywood, you think of like, you know, with intricate handwork. That's why I was like, that's not Bollywood, but okay. <laughs> like the 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 scene at the very end of the episode with Devin and Julian dancing and all you see is Mina's face. And you can see it on Conrad and Nick too. They're like all like the all, it's all knowing now. It's everywhere. Yeah, like, it's everywhere. And then the song that plays over the scene is absolutely perfect for it. I mean, yeah, they did a good job with that. The music is always really good for their show. On point. On point. But yeah, because Devin's bachelor party was supposed to be in this episode and it kind of got ruined and they got joined in the girls' night. So, I think the fact that Priya never really hung out with the other doctors mm-hmm. you know, it was, uh, it, for me, like a real sign that it was due. Because she never really like it, integrated herself in the, like his life as a doctor. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, she never met Conrad. She never met Nick or oh. Mina or all of them. And, and he's always hanging out with them and there's no there's no Priya anywhere. Yeah. That's what I was that's what I <laughs> another sign of a doomed relationship. Yes. The guys were intending on going water rafting. That didn't play out. Conrad didn't want to go. Irving yeah. realized he couldn't do it. Well <laughs> I, I would have just I would have loved to have seen. So instead, they went to the bar and like did karaoke and Bollywood dancing. <laughs> yeah. Kent was awesome because because Mina actually decided to work with both AJ and Kent in this episode. Yeah, so she, simultaneously, yeah. it's so funny to watching AJ play ping pong with the residents or play operator. What is that operation? Game operation. Yes. Yes. <laughs> do what? Ping <laughs> pong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to choose his next resident or whatever. It was so hilarious because when Mina came in and told him what the actual diagnosis is, he like, you know, buzzed the operation <laughs> game. <laughs> and the resident was like, ha! <laughs> Cause, you know, he Probably was- a good thing he wasn't actually performing surgery. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hilarious. But yes, oh my god. Were you good? Were you ever good at that game operation? No. And I, I had it as a kid, but I was very bad at it. <laughs> good thing neither of us are surgeons. <laughs> I I knew very early on I was never gonna be in the medical field, so <laughs> but yeah, so I, I like watching him like do all those kind of things to test like his next meta or whatever. So I wonder if he's going to do that next season, you know, to find that that meta's gone or whatever. 
So that's all for the discussion on the episode. So upcoming podcast, we have one more podcast for August and it's 208 Heart in a Box. So we'll be doing yep. that. September, September 6th will be 209, which is the dance. It's Devin's non-wedding. We're going to take a week break. September 20th, we're going to pretty much run down all the information we have for season five that has come out. We're going to get you ready for season five. So September 20th, we're going to pretty much, we did it for season four as well, if you remember. So we're going to do that again. Just talk about episode titles and synopsis and stuff like that. September 27th, we'll be talking about 501. No title known at the moment. Uh, (laughs) I... I want to say more, I, I'm going to have to say more to be revealed. I don't want to plan October quite yet because we're in August. So as we get closer to October, we'll have release more podcasts. Okay. But yeah. It's all like fluid. This whole schedule thing is all fluid. There's yeah, it's all tentative. But we know for a fact that this 501 date is permanent. That, that's yes. been announced. Um, Unless like the apocalypse happens. The 21st of September. It's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. But, and and then we'll release the podcast on the 27th. So, yeah. Yeah. We do have a Patreon account. And I want to remind everyone who goes, "Eh, whatever, it's a dollar a month and you get the podcast released early. Usually it's about 12 hours prior to us releasing the podcast for that week. Yep. So, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's that. So if you prefer, would prefer that way, $1, you can cancel it anytime. $1, you can get the sneak peek of the podcast before it releases to um, the rest of the world. And you can also get sneak peeks of the episode art, like the podcast art, stuff like that. Behind the scenes, I try. <laughs> My podcast is called Hallmark Card Beats. Podcast all about Hallmark movies. Which kind of is funny because we'll talk about this later when it when it when more information comes out. But Corbin Benson was just announced to be in a Hallmark movie, tentatively titled "Love at the Steeplechase." It- yeah, Corbin Benson, for those of you who don't recognize the name, plays Nick's dad, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the grand grandpa brigade. <laughs> Part of the Grandpa Brigade, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So he's going to be on Hallmark on September 25th. And I will, he'll be working with Nick Deloach. And I, I, my podcast is all about Hallmark movies and stuff. And so we are, I have several interviews lined up already and stuff. So I'm excited about that. I can't wait. Yeah. Hallmark Heartbeats. She has the Hawaii Coffee, which is at H Mart Heartbeats. And then you have your Instagram, which is at Hallmark Heartbeats. Hallmark right? Heartbeats. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Ways to contact us. We have our email, which is the resident rule breakers at gmail.com. And then we have our Facebook page, which is the resident rule breakers podcast linked to the Facebook group, which we've mentioned many, many times. The probably the best way to keep and keep up with news and stuff on the resident is that group. Yeah. And it's, called the resident fox fans it's linked to the page at the very top says join group not in it answer all four questions and please answer them thoroughly um <laughs> we have that so the group really is a good place and like don't turn off the notes notica- notifications if you really want to know what's going on yep. and check the announcements please those are important yep. especially as we get closer to air dates instagram we have at the resident podcast and we're going it, to, it, it, closer we get to season five, the more information we'll be posting, the more posts we'll be doing. We're going to try to really keep up with it this year. It really didn't happen last year because I got sick on me. Sorry. Uh, but this year, we're going to keep up with it as far as best we can. Press releases, photos, the whole nine yards. So yes. keep up with that. Promos. And so then Camille has at the resident Fox fans, another good place to go. And then I have at, at KB Country 37. And then, we, of course, we have our Twitter, which is at Resident Podcast. So and then, of course, both Hallmark Heartbeats and the Resident Rule Breakers are on pretty much every podcast platform imaginable. Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, 
iHeartRadio, YouTube. We have all these places for you to, to check it out. In two weeks, we're going to be discussing episode 208, Heart in a Box. That is August 23rd. Yep. So until then, I'm Kayla. I'm Camille. Bye. Bye, guys.